We're here with Dana Malhas Khandur. Welcome to Pivot. Thank you so much. My friend, first and foremost. And then, I mean, I feel like we've grown together over so many years, becoming pre-marriage and then, well, not really pre-marriage, me pre-marriage. Yeah. And then moving into sort of adult life. And through this adult life, especially for me, you've always been there, whether it's been in the background or it's like a, you know, further friend. But I feel every year over the past, let's say, seven years, we've grown closer. 100% for me, I feel like you're that person that's always there. Even if I don't talk to you every day, yeah. even if we don't see each other every day, I know you're always there. Yeah. And I love watching you grow and experiment. Oh, and I, I really, no, really, before we start with me, like I'd like to say this about you, like I admire how much courage you have to keep starting new things. And out of everything you've done, everything has been amazing. You know, my husband and I are a fan of your uh, line uh, and then your uh, your workout studio. Um, but I feel like you were made for this. Oh, like, Dana! No, really. What you a nice thing to really, say. You're like such an amazing friend, such an amazing person to talk to, um, really easy to relate to. You always say the right things somehow. And I'm so happy you're sharing this with everyone. I mean, I just got nervous and sweaty. Ah. I felt like I was just, you know, but that's so sweet no, of really, you to say. No, really, really. This is and like coming honestly, from the heart. And even when you first started, that's what I felt. Mm. I don't know if I shared this with you or not, but when I saw it, I said, yes, this is what Yasmin should be doing. Oh, I mean, I mean, the amount of like warmth I feel when you say that is just no, really. crazy. And no. thank you. No. Honestly, that means the world to me. But now we're going to switch it back to you. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> it's easier when it's on you. But it's okay. so much easier when it's on you. <laughs> okay. So um, you let's start with sort of a little bit of a CV mm. and then we'll move into our questions. So you studied marketing at AUB. Yes. You then you're, you're a fashion entrepreneur. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Exactly. So you had a. A boutique in Jada yes, Cold Cream, which is where started. actually that's how we met. I think because you, uh, we were stalking your brand. Exactly. exactly. That's probably our first like interaction. Email. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. That yes. makes sense. Yeah. I didn't even think of that until yeah. now. By yeah, the way, yeah, I just remembered. Also. Yeah. So yeah. cream. Yeah. Um, which you're not a part of that anymore. It's not that I'm not a part of it. It was a beautiful journey and yeah. we did so well, alhamdulillah. And then it reached a point where my family needed me more yes and it was a decision i had to take and i wanted to take that decision when the store was on a high okay i didn't want it to go down and then shut down so it was a very difficult decision because we were doing very well yeah and i was really enjoying it and it was something i loved but it was uh i had just had my first uh son khalid and i was living here and the store was in Jeddah yeah. and I was going back and forth every three weeks. Yeah, logistically that stuff. It didn't work. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want it to go down. I don't want to ruin the name. So I just wanted to end it on a high and l always look back at it as an amazing six years of my life. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I like the way that you think, you know, and leaving on a high. That, That's tough for a lot of people. That, honestly, I have to give a credit to my husband. Okay. It was Amr. Um, Amr is super positive, uh, very rational, very diplomatic, where I'm more emotional and more like, no, I can do it, I can do it. And he said, no, it's fine. That's, Everything, very, that's very female yeah. or feminine, you know? Yeah. yeah. He's like, everything comes to an end mm -hmm. and end it on a high and focus on what's next. So it was 100% Amr. Amazing. His okay, influence, so Amr's influence. Yeah, not, not Amr's influence on you making the decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was his influence. It made sense. I liked it, and I'm happy I I listened. Amr's wonderful. He He's is. one of those just yeah great humans. Alhamdulillah. So um, okay, so moving on from cream, then you have your digital creation or your content creation on your platform yeah. on Instagram. But also, there's something that not a lot of people know while I was opening cream mm. I was working at an investment bank oh yeah. I didn't know the investment bank was, was in parallel during, with that that's 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 what was crazy okay so how it happened is when I finished university finished graduated mm -hmm. from AUB cream was a store in Beirut for actually my sister-in-law now and her friend and I loved their concept and I believed in it so much yeah. and I knew it was missing in the Saudi market because we had all these Chanel Dior all yeah. these big brands the and they had brands. Zara mm -hmm. and the uh, more casual brands and we didn't have something in between okay and I loved the focus on regional brands and local designers and I loved the idea of introducing something that not everyone knows where it's from this is how I shop even now I buy a piece that I like and this is the idea behind cream. I can I'm the same as you yeah in that sense. I yeah. swear yeah. people ask me about the brand I'm wearing 
I don't know. I, I bought that, it. I, I liked think it. most people would be like, no, what is she talking about? Yeah. Because you represent brands yeah. and you are the face of certain, not face of, but as a new, you know, yeah, you're I an work ambassador a lot for with, some brands. Yeah, I love high end yeah. brands and I buy from them and I'm a client and it, I enjoy them and I believe in the brands I promote. But I also love to mix and match. It's yeah. not all brands from head to toe. I think that's easy to achieve. You go into a store, you get the full look and leave. No, for me, I love mixing and matching. That's not very difficult. Yeah. Or, or, or um, uh, let's say... There's no so style. sense of style into it. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been a fan of mixing stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when I went back home to Jeddah, my parents, um, we were discussing my graduation gift. And I said, actually, I just want an amount to start this business that I really believe in. Mm. And they said, okay, we like the way you're thinking. But if we do that, you have to work at uh, you have to try the corporate world and you have to work oh, at the I, bank. I like that they pushed you to yeah. do, at least try it. Yeah, they yeah. said if you don't do it now, if you start with opening your own store, you're never going to do it. Yeah. So they said we need you. Question, I'm going to interrupt you. What did you learn from the, the corporate world? I actually really enjoyed it. Mm. I was lucky. Um, I was lucky with the people around me. I, really, the team was amazing. Yeah. Everyone I worked with became really close friends. And till now, like they're very special to me. Um, I learned discipline, being there on time, leaving on time, deliverables, deadlines, all of that. Um, I, I understood how it works. Like I studied marketing and books but I never applied it. So this really helped me. Mm. Uh, and at the time I'm, I'm the bank. So I was on the client side. Yeah. So now I know both sides. Uh, so I'm very grateful that actually they pushed me th down that path. And, um, it was at the time it was not easy to do both. So I was doing the bank nine to five and five to 11 at the store, wow. literally every single day for two years. And I even missed some summers in between. Uh, so that was tough at the time. Like it was too much for like a 21 year old. Um, but I, looking back, it's something I'm very proud of. Yeah. yeah. I'm proud of you. That I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah. I had no idea. Um, and I had completely different roles. That was hard to you switch. You had two jobs. You had two, two no, full time jobs. Like at the bank, a I'm a first line employee. Yeah. I am like a marketing assistant, like not like I am the, where everything gets thrown Bottom out. of the ladder. Exactly. Yeah. And then I go to the store and I'm the boss. Mm -hmm in a way, because uh, even I was involved in everything. I was involved in, uh, I was involved in the contracting. I was involved in the interior design and the visual merchandise and the buying and the marketing and the PR accounting. I didn't have an accountant the first six months. So I was literally doing- It's kind doing, of confusing. I was like doing Like you're walking into everything. each job as different people. Yeah, like I go at 9 a.m. like this, I leave 5 p.m. like this, you know? Um, and yeah, like I said, like I had a contractor even uh, helping with the store and I didn't like his work and I asked him to leave and I literally did everything my own went down to the bookstore bought uh, interior design books uh, stores and magazines magazines and magazines pinned the things I like hired my carpenter hired hired the guy of the lighting and I Incredible. was doing that so this is why I missed so many summers uh, but alhamdulillah it was a really really amazing achievement for me yeah yeah like career -wise, especially at that age especially yeah. at that age like nobody when they're 21 wants to be doing that trust yeah. me. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. no I've always been very uh, rational and mature and like reasonable yeah you know um that's the Libra in you I think so I think so yeah yeah, yeah. you would know I mean <laughs> I, I think so you're yeah. you're you're a very balanced Libra. Usually Libras, I feel, are seeking balance, but like I feel like you're very balanced. Really? Yeah, like you got there, girl. Thanks, girl. Okay, so, okay, we've gone through sort of the past CV, yes. all right? Um, vague question. Mm -hmm. What do you as Dana stand for on a day-to-day? -day? Mm. Um, for me, what is most important in life in my character, in people around me, in my work and everything is to be 100% honest with myself. Mm. For me, every single night, this is what I I review mm. in my head. Is this really me? Does this really go with my principles? Am I the same person online as this person offline? For my friends who see me on Instagram, is this the same person they hang out with? When this, when I'm comfortable with this, I'm very happy. Mm. Yeah, and the same with people I meet. If I feel like they are not consistent, they are not honest, pretending or um, not completely honest with themselves, it turns me off. Yeah. So this is something very important for me, even with my kids, I try to teach them that 
you do you. We don't care about what people think. We don't care about what the outside world thinks. You want to go there, we go there. You don't want to leave. You want to leave, we leave. Um, so yeah, being honest with yourself and doing things that you genuinely love and believe in is for me the most important thing. That's when I love that. That's how you stay grounded, mm-hmm. in my opinion. That's how you stay grounded. Yeah, and aligned with who you are. Yeah, because yeah. we're not all supposed to be doing the same thing. We're not yeah. all supposed to be acting the same. And I feel. Yeah. We're in a phase of um, maybe it's technology, maybe it's just generational. Yeah. I'm not sure, but people are just morphing yeah. into the same. It's easy to lose track of yeah. who you are and just follow. Especially now. Exactly. Yeah. But this is exactly what I don't like. Mm. Mm. Whether it's following trends I'm that grateful don't suit we me. grew up in a different time. 100%. Because I think it's has, easier for us to say yeah, this than it yeah. m- might be for someone who's yeah. like 18 now, let's yeah, say. 100%. But, yeah. And okay. also it's mm. a lot to do with our parents and our upbringing. Yani, it was what, simpler, ev- yeah. Like my mom and my dad's voices are always in me. Like they never left me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's what they've taught us. Yeah. Uh, and it stuck with me. So this is relevant to this question, mm. um, to the first question. But... Um, because I know you personally, this is something that I know. Mm. I'm not sure if like other people know mm. this, but I know religion and faith is a huge part of who you are. Huge. Um, from your from your day to day to sort of the way you think, the way you speak, the way you even may handle your social media. Like I know it's mm. a huge part of you. Mm. So, um, can you explain what role it plays in your life in your day to day? It's. Um it's it's everything for me. It's yeah. everything. Like you said, in every small, every big decision, this is at the back of my head. Yeah. In everything I do, in everywhere, everything I think of, it's it's at the back of my head. Um, and even though, I mean, you know, some people might not know this, I was covered for five years. Um, when was that? My teenage years, mm-hmm. 14 to 19. Um, so even though I am not now, but that was a promise I did to myself to ch- stay the same person. To Would never you be change. able to tell me what made you do that at such a young age? Yeah, I'm very happy to talk about it. Actually, it's uh, I'm actually very grateful for those five years. And I feel like uh, God did this to protect me during these difficult teenage years. Mm. It's like he loved me so much. He wanted to protect me. And then he had trust in me and he let me go. Um, I was, I, I'm very grateful for how close I was to him. Still am, alhamdulillah, but this is how it started. Uh, I learned discipline. I learned how to stick to my practice. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I still believe it is wajib. Like some people might remove it and say, no, but he, they meant this, they meant that. No, we're not supposed to. Time and age are different. I don't mess with the Quran. Yeah. And I follow it as it is. I don't question. Uh, so I still believe it is, we have to try at least maybe to each his own, but like yeah. personally, uh, but I just couldn't do it. It was difficult for me. I tried for five years. Uh, none of my family were. But like, I was going to then ask yeah. you, yeah. how did your family feel about you doing this at such a young age, especially as none of them were yeah. covered? Yeah. The females, let's yeah. say, and you have so only sisters. Yeah. So yeah. my sisters were much younger. True. My mom is always has always been very very faithful, practices very religious. Yeah. She is the most amazing human being you will ever see. She is everything Islam represents, mm-hmm. but just not covered. That's it. Uh, so she does and practices. So she set this example for you that exactly. was that was great. Yeah. Exactly. But how did she take it? So. Believe it or not, these five years, I put it on and I took it off. Until today, I don't know what my parents thought of it. Oh, wow. It was always like, you like, you that want this. That is shocking for an Arab family. Oh, really? Shocking really, you know, to not really. have heard one opinion on Nothing. what? What? Friends were giving opinions. Extended family were giving opinions. Every single person felt entitled to wow. give an opinion. And my parents, till today, never said anything. Especially that when I put it on, I was not with them. Mm. So I was with my friends at a trip in Medina for in Ramadan. And I decided then and there. And then I came back home. I didn't say anything for two days. Because in Jeddah, anyways, we, we were always covered true, with true, the Abaya. So it wasn't something really uh, to stand out. And then we were, as we were going to the beach, as we always used to on weekends, instead of packing my swimsuit, I packed my cover and my parents. Oh, I have goosebumps. That's crazy. Yeah. No, that, really. What a, what a um, oof, impactful moment. Yeah. To yeah. Courage from my side yeah. and also a lot of 
like patience from their side, like the way they handled like like no one overreacted, no one reacted. I'm telling you till today, I don't know how they feel about it. So can they I looked ask at them? me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next pivot. Can I give them a call? 12. I'll call them right now. <laughs> Just how do you really feel? Um, and I don't want to put them in this position. No, to of course, ask, of course. Honestly, you yes. know. So I just never also questioned. And they maybe you're not at me. supposed to know. Yeah, we're not supposed to know yeah. all the time. But I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm surprised you haven't asked. No, I would. I don't want them to say something that they don't want to say out loud. Like, yeah, they probably would have said it had they wanted to. Exactly. So, yeah. So they looked at me. They said, "Is this what you really want?" I said, "Yes." They said, "Okay, we're with you." And the same thing when I decided to remove it five years later. Also, uh, my parents were with my grandma actually doing a surgery, and I was in Jordan with my family, and I decided that. I, it's becoming very difficult for me. Yeah. Um, and I called them and I said, and they said, is this what you really want? I said, yes. They said, we're with you. Exact same reaction. Oh, what great parents. Yeah, they are. They really, really are the best. Alhamdulillah. Oh, wow. I didn't expect to hear that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I expected to hear like a sentence, but yeah. not the, the details. No, no, that you just some said, people wow, wow. think I'm not comfortable to talk about it or it's something I'm ashamed of. Not at all. I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy it happened. I wish I could do longer. I admire people who wear hijab now. Yeah. But it's just something that was so difficult for me. And I came to terms where, with myself that I can be the same good person. Alhamdulillah, like, I don't know, 10, 15 years later I s kept that promise to myself yeah and it's just for me the cover that's different okay mm. um you got married young very young and I would say in today's um gener not today's generation let's just say people are it it's leaning more towards getting married as people get older mm. I don't see a lot of people getting mm. married young anymore. Mm. Mm. I was like 30 when I got mm. married and I, I consider that maybe an average. Mm. Um, but now you see people getting married their late 30s, mm. uh, even 40s, and it's a new norm, even having kids much later as well. Yeah. So what would your recommend recommendation be to not just women, but guys and girls who are young? Would you recommend getting married mm. young? So Amr and I were both 24 when we got married. Yeah. So we met at university, fell in love, engaged, married. Very typical uh, love story. Um, I think it takes more courage for the man to take this step than the woman. And uh, honestly, I have to say, Amr has always been a super confident person. He sees something, he likes it, he'll take it. I'll do it. I don't care what his friends were, nowhere nowhere near there they're just getting married now yeah. he never cared um also a lot of credit goes to his mom she raised them to be like that yeah. and she always encouraged um her boys to get married young because she loves them to be like settled and well taken care of and have a loving than, partner yeah whereas some other moms don't like that for yeah. their kids uh, so i think a lot of that goes to amir and his family yeah. for taking this decision at such a young age for me at 24 as a girl in Saudi was not so young, but I was definitely one of the first uh, from my friends. Yeah. Um, for me, it's not about age. It's not ab uh, it's not about time. But you can meet the right person at 20. You can re meet the right person at 50. Yeah, it's the right person. Yep. So once I met Amr and I felt this is the right person, this is who I want to be. This is the person who's going to bring the best out of me and I will happily spend every single day of my life with him. Mm -hmm. Then I took the decision and I didn't look back or think or question. It was a very easy decision for us, Incredible. me personally. Which goes know. back to your, what do you stand for? Which yeah. is just feeling yeah. like everything you're doing and you're making the right decisions for yeah. yourself that are aligned with you. So that was one when at, at 24. Yeah, there you go. I never thought of it like that, yeah. but yeah. Um, so it, for me, it wasn't something uh, with, really, it was not such a big decision in my head. Yeah. It made sense. This guy is perfect for me. This is exactly what I look for in a man. And he feels the same way. Yeah. And we were friends for a year. Yeah. We were friends for a year where we were in different stages of our lives. So we know each other very well. And then we realized that, no, we only want to be with each other. Do you feel like being friends is a big part of a successful 100%. marriage? 100 percent. OK, 100%. being friends first, I mean. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. So we had the talk when we first when we first met. He said, I really like you. What kind of a girl are you? And I said, 
um, like, what do you mean? Then how like, to answer that? Yeah, yeah, I was like, I, 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 no, I will not get into anything unless it's a bit potentially serious or makes sense, you know? He said, oh, I just got out of a relationship and I'm on the exact other side of the uh, page. And I said, okay, he said, can we stay friends? I enjoy your company. I said, of course, you don't owe me anything. So we stayed friends for a year knowing that we kind of liked each other, but it won't work. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't something that grew. It was there from the beginning and we pushed it on the side. It was just a timing thing though exactly. as well. I just think he maybe needed a bit more time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, But it's nice that you stayed friends. It's nice we stayed friends. It's nice that he was so honest about it. Yeah. He didn't play around. In my head, I know we're not on the same page. Yeah. And then a year later, he's like, listen, I don't care what it is you are the person for me. And uh, that's why I always say it's the person. It's not the time. It's not the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, Dana, we're going to go into your pivot. Yes. So I want to hear about a pivot that you've gone through in your life mm-hmm. that you feel is important to share, whether it be to send a message, whether mm-hmm. it be to help anyone listening mm-hmm. or just so people get to know you better, to understand um, more about who you are mm. and what you've dealt with in life and yeah. w- also the tools you have used during that pivot to help you. Mm. So being the very systematic, rational OCD person I am, I have two pivots, one on a personal level and one more on a career level. Okay. So the career one is what we discussed, the time I was doing a full-time job at the yeah. bank and opening my own store and... <laughs> Uh, trying to manage all of that, that really changed me and taught me so much about myself. Yeah. My personal pivot is also something that maybe most people don't know, is um, when I was told that I might never be a mother. Oh, did yeah. not know that. Yeah. And it was this blunt. Oof. Yeah. I have goosebumps again. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing to me today? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, How old were you when that happened? 27, maybe. Okay. Um, so we were married young, like I said, 24. We didn't plan to start a family right away. We were traveling. We were just enjoying our time together. And then three years later, we felt like it was time. Um, of course, at the beginning, first six months, no one takes you seriously if it doesn't work. But I felt that there was something wrong with me because of my checkups. There was always a note that the doctor said, but they'd say, but it's normal, but it's normal. And, oh. you know, back then we don't do checkups until after we get married. So I, this mark that they always left was always a question mark in my head. Mm. Uh, but they said it was normal. So I just went along with it. And then um, I decided to go get it checked in Paris, went to a doctor there and he was very surprised for uh, me to be there like I'm young and I just started trying to have kids and he said you know I'd be a millionaire if every person like you would try for six months and come to me he said go try for a year and then you book an appointment I said okay this is why you're in Paris yeah I no, mean, no, this is he nothing. Just, couldn't he just see you because you're <laughs> yeah, in Paris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's annoying. No, he saw me. Like, oh, I okay, went okay, into okay. his office and he said, there's nothing alarming. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I wasn't convinced. I went to London uh, and I went to a guy there. I will not name him. And um, we did checkups and I was crying. He's like, why are you crying? You're so young. It's going to happen. Everything in the world uh, anything you have IVF can fix he said IVF fixes everything there's only one problem IVF cannot fix it's called premature ovarian failure and of course you don't have it you're so young you're healthy you, you've been just trying for a few months I said um, okay he said let's do tests we'll see and then we'll make a plan and we go ahead with it I said very good we do the tests the next day he calls me he says you know that one thing I told you is not fixable oh with IVF God. I said yeah he said yeah you have that I said, what do you mean? You said, I'm so young, blah, blah, blah. He said, I know, I'm shocked. It's like one in a million or like one in a crazy number. Wow. And you're just one of them. I said, and this you can only tell from a blood test. And I didn't do this blood test before. And I said, uh, okay, can we try? He said, no, no, no. You lower my success rate. I will never take a patient like you. He literally said that to me. I said, what do you mean? He said, it never works on people. Nothing will work on you. None of the IVF treatments, none of the medications will work on you. You will lower my success rate. I don't even take patients like you. I said, can we try? He said, no, no, just go pray to God that you ever get pregnant. 
This is exactly what he said. I, I'm speechless. Yeah. Like, I'm literally speechless. I know. I've never heard of such a, um, yeah. like, conclusive mm. thing for mm. a doctor to say. Refuse to treat Not me. giving you any, firstly not treating you, but yeah. also not referring you to, like, a specialist. And just thinking of me as a, as a percentage, a statistic yeah. for your success rate, you know. And then he shuts the phone and he charges me an amount other than what I paid for all the tests for this phone consultation. That in itself mm. would have told you as this mm. like aware person that you are, mm. that this is just a really bad doctor mm. and go find somebody mm. else. But he's one of the best in London. F fine, yeah. but, but so still. You're young, yeah, you don't, no, that you're not have, thinking So what did that straight. do to you? I literally fell down on my knees. Literally, I was standing and just phew, crashed. And of course I cried. I'm so sorry very, you went through that, my no, gosh. Alhamdulillah, now I speak of it as a very... I want everyone listening uh, to know that really when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Everyone used to tell me that. I never believed it. You mean timing? Just timing. And when God wants it to happen, it will happen. No doctor, no medicine Divine will timing. interfere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this guy said, like, you might never. I said, am I ever going to be a mom? He said, maybe never. <clears throat> Just pray. Um, and I said, one day when I have all my kids, I'm going to email this guy with pictures of us and tell him that he was Did wrong. You? So I saw him once on the road in Lebanon, actually. No way. Yeah, and I was with Khalid, and I saw him, and I shut down, I turned around, and I said, I don't want him to see yeah, my yeah, kids. Yeah. I, I, I do I not want him around me. I don't want him in my life. I don't want his energy. And I walked the other way. Uh, so that was the first doctor. So again, I didn't listen to him. I went to another clinic, which is supposed to be one of the top in London. It's like a boot camp. That was really, really draining and exhausting because, uh, first of all, it's boot camp. It's a boot camp. It's tough. You wake up at 6 a.m. every day. You do your test. It's dark outside. Oh, it's outside. like a it's place cold. that you are what unfamiliar you with. I left my life here and moved. I've never heard of this. Wait, a boot camp for, for what? No, like I'm saying it's like a boot camp. It's mm -hmm. not a boot camp. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like there's Harvard and there's other universities. This was the Harvard. Okay. Like, this is the tough way. Um, so yeah, it was hard because we left our lives here. Uh, Amr was working, going back and forth, which yeah. made me feel so guilty. My mom was working at the bank back then, would go back and forth and leave her job just to come take turns with Amr. We were living in a hotel room, like me and uh, my family would stay in the same hotel, um, like not even in a relaxed environment. It's winter, it's dark, you wake up every day, yeah, you London do your winter tests. Is harsh. Yeah. And I'm not a London girl, yeah. I've never, I never lived there. Uh, and it's cold and it's just us. Uh, so yeah, you do your tests in the morning. You will, you would never see the doctor. The doctor is like a, till today I've never met him. He has doctors in between. He sees your files, he writes his recommendations and then they tell you what to do. So if you have a question, then I ask back. He says, I'll get back to you. He, he has to wait for like the next day or two days later, goes ask the big yeah, doctor yeah, and comes back to me. Yeah, bureaucracy is his finest. Oh my God. So it was just a very stressful process. And the fact that you couldn't speak to the doctor and yeah. understand what's happening and they're just injecting stuff in me and putting me uh, uh, under full anesthesia and like doing procedures and trying stuff uh, and not knowing if it's ever going to happen. So you were like an experiment. Yeah, but they didn't say that it won't happen like that guy. Okay. They said, yeah, we'll try. And they went full force on me. And uh, we tried a lot of times. And then there were times where they'd tell me, go back home and the first day of your cycle, fly back in. So I'd come back to Dubai, seven, eight hours. And then the day I get uh, my cycle starts, I get on a flight and I travel again, leaving everything behind. There. You know, I got married the year that you were pregnant with Khaled. Yes, that's why I didn't come to your wedding. Exactly. Yeah. And I would, I, I've known you for so long and I don't know this. No one knows this because, not because it's a secret or anything. One, I said when I'm done with all my kids, I will speak about it. And I guess maybe now the time has come. And two is because um, at the time when I was going through it, I wanted to go through it on my own. Some people, it's how I deal with things. Yeah. I have a problem. I solve it on my own, yeah. in my room, with my family. When I'm out, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want anyone to think of it. I don't want this energy. I it's easier for me when no one knows. I totally respect that. Yeah, like and it, appreciate that yeah. actually. And I don't want ever anyone's pity and I don't want anyone's opinion and uh, I'll just deal with it on my own. Once it's over, I'm very happy to talk about it. Yeah. 
So it's not a secret that I hide or something I'm ashamed of or anything. It's just that at the time, literally nobody knew because it was easier for me. 100%. I'm stronger like that. Yeah. And this is what matters. So anyways, went back and forth. So many procedures. Nothing would work. Three, four months later, they're like, listen, we've never seen a case like this. Go home, rest, and we'll uh, think of a plan and call you. And they still didn't call me. I have two kids now and they still haven't no. called me. Yeah. They still haven't called So me. obviously the solution or your first baby did not really come from that. Both my kids way. were not IVF babies. Wow. Both my kids were 100% natural from God, alhamdulillah, at a time where I was giving up. So also shows you let, Maybe you let go. Exactly, stress. So okay. really, so I came back from London. And I, so at one point when they said that, I swear to God, I, I'm always with my family or yeah. husband or I like to be around these people when they said that I said I need to be alone and I remember I was walking in the streets of London I swear to God looking at the sky and crying and saying please God please my dream has always been to be a be mother, mother yeah. I'm very motherly by nature I'm the eldest sister I love to take care of everyone around me whether it's a friend a sister uh, my kids everyone mm -hmm. so I said please 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 just I just want to have kids that's all I want And uh, so when I came back home, I told my family, I don't want any doctors. I don't want any medications. This is going to be between me and God. And that's it. And then my mom said, please just go to one doctor in Dubai. He's amazing. We've heard the best things about him. I will mention his name, Dr. Ahmed Fakir. And um, just get it checked with him, get an opinion. And I have to say, he was incredible, really. He just gave me this comfort. He's like, why are you crying? Why did you go through all of this? You are going to get pregnant, inshallah. And just relax, take it easy, take these vitamins, take these pills, like like off the counter Put stuff. Put aside doctors, but that's the kind of person He's you need to be around person. at this, He's an this amazing point person. of struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just gave me the comfort I needed. I then got pregnant on uh, later on naturally. Alhamdulillah, yeah. I didn't need anything. But they gave me the comfort and they removed all the stress Yeah. I was going through and I was back home and it was Ramadan. I was at the mosque every single day, me and my husband. So your tool, I would say, during your pivot of basically being being told you'll never never be a mother. Yes. To having your kids yeah. would be faith. Faith, 100%. And again, emphasizing how you live your life mm. that way anyways. Mm. But this was turning to God. And also, I think... I learned so much about myself mm. at that time. Like even my mom was very impressed with me because she said, I am now knowing exactly what's in your heart. She's like, I was worried about telling you because at the time everyone was getting pregnant yeah. around me and my mom would just try to avoid telling me. And then I figured it out and I said, mom, why don't you tell me? She said, and uh, I don't want you, to, I don't want to hurt you. And I said, mom, now, I appreciate it more than ever. And I am happier for yeah. people around me. When I hear they're pregnant, I know how precious it is and how hard it is. I am a hundred times happier for them now than I would have before I knew I had this problem. And she said, wow. She said, you know that not everyone thinks like that. It, for yeah. me, it was normal. For me, it was, this is how we should all think. Yeah. But my mom made me realize this about me is that I never, 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 not once questioned why me, never. I have faith, I believe there's a reason for everything, and I know that um, life can't be easy all the time. It's okay if God gives me a challenge, and I'll take it, and I'll try my best, and me and him together will we'll get through it. And of course, the support of my family, and Amr's family, and Amr as a person, really was amazing. Um, that's so incredible. So it's your family and God. Yeah, that's all I need. Yeah, Health, family, and God, that's all I need. That's what makes me happy. That is something I'm so happy you shared. And I feel mm. like a lot of girls going yes. through any form of struggle to yeah. do with fertility, having children, yeah. IVF, um, will really appreciate coming from you. Yeah, and it's important to say that in my case, IVF did not work. And I ended up getting pregnant naturally, which is kind of what the first doctor said. 
but it's just the way he said it was really mean. Yeah. You know, um, so alhamdulillah, I, with Khalid. Oh, I, oh yeah, you're, he did say go pray to God. Like that's your only option. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, you would have done that anyways. He was saying yeah. it in a really I don't horrible, condescending way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it happened naturally with Khalid. And then with Dania, my second, I knew I had a problem. So five months after I gave birth to Khalid, Uh, and I, I I was done with breastfeeding. I decided it's time to try for the second. It's time because I don't have time. I'm at a race against time with this premature ovarian failure. And um, I tried IVF in a more gentle way and not okay. because we realized that the extreme medication does not work on me. And we had a plan where we would extract every month and then freeze them all, test them and put back whatever works. So we did that for eight months, every single month without hormones, with just like tablets and stuff, not injections. Yeah. They put me to sleep, extract it, sit, freeze it. And then until we had a certain number, we didn't get the number we wanted. So after eight months, we said, let's test it. We had two. Okay. We put them back. I didn't get pregnant. Zero. So eight, nine months of work religiously every month. Like we probably saw me at the school dropping off or picking up before one of my procedures. Yeah, I'm guessing now. 100%. I percent, yeah. I swear. Uh, but خلاص, for me, when I, I'm in like action mode, no time for emotions of course i had my low points and of course i crashed so many times but then i'd try to think of it and solve it rationally and then we said okay fine then the freezing won't work let's try extracting and putting it back right away we did that i got pregnant and then nine weeks later i lost the baby mm. yeah and where and how i lost the baby is just insane so so we knew the the, the pregnancy will not continue And the doctor said, it's over. It's going to happen anytime soon, the yeah. miscarriage. I said, okay, I've put my ho- life on hold for so long. I'm just going to live my life yeah. and do whatever I want now. Um, and then after that, I realized that, you know what? I'm forcing this to happen. I'm playing around with uh, fate. I'm just going to let it go. Maybe God yeah. sent me one son that for me is worth a million. I'm very grateful for him. And... That's all I need. خلاص, alhamdulillah. We so will. So that's when you let go again. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's when I said it's fine. I have one kid. I will make sure he is well surrounded with the right people all the time. I will give him my all and more. Mm. And if it's not meant to be, I'm not going to force it anymore. Two months later, three months later, I got pregnant with Dini. So we're going to revert. Like the go, best addition. We're going to. Oh my god, she's the best. I mean, this this little girl yeah. just. I don't know. My son is obsessed with my her. Love. So she's I just she'll always be around my house. Um so the tools within this, you know, really tough period but also very spiritual experience I feel that you've gone through with this mm. is leaning into your faith even more in your family and also learning when to let go. But it's not easy. It's not something I consciously did. I didn't say, I wish I was that person. I cannot disconnect. This is something But I'm Donna, working most people, on. Most people can't. Yeah. So you I know, can't say, normal. oh yeah, I did that and then it worked. No, I didn't do it. Y- you were it, pushed exactly, to a point to exactly. then realize, Life okay, made me do it. I, my, yeah. I have my hands up now. I genuinely, yeah. genuinely needed the break. Like, And I took it. It's not like it was a way of getting my mind off of it. I just said, I can't do it anymore. I need a break, blah, blah. I wish I was able to disconnect. It would help me in so many things. Yeah. But no, I'm. I can't take credit for that. It's just yeah. how things happened. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's I mean, okay. Alhamdulillah. Happy ending. Everyone's okay now. Alhamdulillah. It's just uh, your journey. That journey is has mm-hmm. been a lot. I never would have known. I was on Instagram the whole time, like projects and collaborations, and nobody knew. Nobody knew. I'm just so uh, thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really means the world. And I feel like you're going to help a lot of people. I hope so. And uh, I wish I could have been there for you. But I understand you had to have gone through that mm. um, in your own way. Mm. You know, it's just easier when no one knows. Yes. And the pressure. Did it work? Did it happen? What happened today? What happened yesterday? La, 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 la. And that in itself is energy, which you exactly, don't need. Exactly. And even though people's intentions are good yeah of course i have you don't understand the best the, friends the, around the, me what really. they may be carrying yeah. within them yeah which may not be good you know and i'm not saying I'm not it's not about that people. i don't have doubt in their intentions i know yeah. everyone around me is really i'm so lucky with my friends yes. and my circle of people you and have I, a wonderful i'm very like grateful that. for them but it's just it's me i didn't want the pressure I, i i didn't i couldn't have to answer to answer and to think and the pity i didn't want that yeah. Khalas, i'm okay i'll deal with it on my own Well, mm-hmm. 
this kind of goes into the next question. I know it, like I'm saying it this way, but it's very, it's just flowing well, honestly. <laughs> like the, these questions I wrote down are like flowing very nicely. You're a good interviewer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very, very much about who is on the receiving end of the questions as well. Also the fact that you don't know all of this. I'm just so surprised. I know, I, didn't, I know. Yeah. It's just, it's... Uh, um, perfectionism mm. as a word, okay? Me and you have had a conversation in the past, a personal conversation, mm -hmm. whereby you have told me about, you know, your perfectionism tendencies, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And how it's, I think it, you were saying it, and you know, very casually, just like, oh, I'm such a perfectionist. And like, you know, it can get the better of you sometimes. 100%. It, it can be annoying yeah. to like have that way of being. 100%, okay? yeah. So what is perfectionism? It's this need to appear perfect this is the definition mm. what is the need to appear perfect mm. or to believe it's possible mm. to achieve perfection no for me it's to believe it's possible to achieve perfection and that i will not accept anything less because i can and i know and i will okay. but it's exhausting it's not something i am proud of it's not something that i would like to see in my like deep down when my kids do things and i just feel so proud like oh that's my son yeah yeah she, he's like me ocd and all of that but i don't wish it for him it's yeah. tiring it's exhausting it takes away from the joy of things sometimes the process from the joy of the process do you look at it process. as a flaw or do you look at it as a positive quality so in the process it's a flaw because it's okay. tiring it's exhausting for me and for whoever is involved in the process with me at the end, it's something I'm very proud of and something I I love and appreciate. And Because the knit and the grit that it took to get there yeah. produced something wonderful. Perfect, the way I want it. Okay. Whatever and is it, it worth is. it? My mom keeps saying no and mm. like I should stop, but uh, maybe a middle ground is good. Maybe mm. I think the best way is a middle ground. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should try your best. Okay. Mm. Dana, Instagram for me is a promotional tool. Mm -hmm. It's something that's used to promote something, okay? Mm -hmm. So firstly, I want to know what you're promoting. And secondly, do you think you have a healthy relationship with this promotional tool mm. called Instagram? Um, so for me, my goal on Instagram changes with every phase I go through in yeah. life. For me, it's just a space to share a creative side of me that I'm going through now, whether it was when I first had my store, this is how it started. It was very organic. I opened the account to be in touch with my clients who were the same age as me, show them where we go, where we travel, what we buy, do you want this, do you want that? So this is how it started and how to style things. And then it just really, really organically evolved mm -hmm. uh, into what it is now. So for me at the time, it was to promote the store and then it was, big, it was for me to uh, work with the brands that I love and I look up to. And then it became more about styling and putting things together and showing people different ways to wear one thing. Um, I am a person who loves to share tips and tricks, things, even with my friends, I see something, they wanted this, I'll buy it and send it to them. If someone asks me a question, I'll keep thinking of it until I find a solution yeah. to help. So I like to share. Um, so I shared my creative side in this space. Mm -hmm. And then right now I'm into designing. So I'm co-designing stuff with uh, brands. Uh, so it's really just a space for me to share a bit of my creative side. It yeah. is not what I know is, it's not a space for me to share my personal life, um, what I own, um, and I don't like to overshare or, or oversell things. Um, my relationship with Instagram, is it healthy? I think so, because yeah. again, I feel like online and offline, I am aligned, I am the same person. I am very well aware of my priorities. My family is first, and then this comes on the side for fun to promote or to mm -hmm. show my creative side. Um, and uh, I, never pressure myself to post something if I don't have something to share or I have to get likes or do this or over uh, sh show this so you can get attention. This is against my beliefs and I yeah. don't do that. Um, and it's a space for me to share my love for things, even for regional designers. I love to support them. So it's not just for me. My Instagram is not just for me. Yeah, It's more to show the creative side of me. And I try very hard to always be very, very grounded. And it's been 12 years in the industry and alhamdulillah, I feel like I've achieved that. You um, definitely have. I mean, I've <laughs> seen you host events that, you know, I'm really proud of you. Like looking at, I think you. it was the Mew Mew one that I came to. Mm. And then that concept store, like mm. you're aligning yourself with not just cool brands, mm. but like 
a, amazing environments mm. and it's and brands you. that I would really wear, I would really buy. It you're not doing anything yeah. out of the way, like you're not selling things that you firstly wouldn't wear. Mm. Um, I you know I swear I say no more than yes because yeah. I do this out of a passion and out of this um, I just want to share what I love. That's it. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I think we've come to a point where we have don't have so much time. I'm going to ask you one last thing, mm -hmm. okay? And I do think we're going to have to do a part two because <laughs> I have so much more that I want to talk about. So um, what do you believe more people today should have as a skill mm. in this world mm. to make the world a better place? Every single morning when I drop my kids to school, I whisper in their ears, and the teachers would know that if they're watching. I always say, be kind and strong. It's very important for me to be both at the same time. It's not either or. And kids, it's very hard for them to think, oh, being kind means if someone's going to snatch it, I'm just going to give it to them. No, you can be kind and you can be strong at the same time. Mm. And once you achieve that, whether you're a, a kid or an, a, an adult, I think um, that's the best trait you can have. And I think this is how I am. I am very kind with people who are around me. But once someone steps over or once uh, something happens that I don't like, I will speak up and I will not let it go. Yeah. Yeah. So I think finding the balance, it's very tricky, but it's very important. Dana, this mm -hmm. has been an absolute dream to have you. Thank you. And you kind of entered our new... Uh, studio. I'm so happy. It looks like it's in my house. I, I love feel this. like the first yeah. person to do this with was it had to be you because it does look like your house. I love it so <laughs> it much. Looks really. these, I'm sure you have these chairs. <laughs> this, yes, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this has been incredible. I learned, I think, way more than I expected to learn in this interview about you. As someone that actually knows you, I'm I'm really just in yeah. awe of you. The way that you deal with things, you're such a graceful. Thank human, you so much. Thank kind you. human. And Thank I just you. wish more people, you know, can learn from you. Thank you very much. And Thank I really you hope your boosting. platform continues to grow so you can, I don't know, just be such a the good influence that you are. Thank you for coming. Thank and I do think we need a part two because I didn't get through at least five questions and I'm kind of annoyed. I'm happy to come <laughs> back anytime. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Love you.